Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with part 14 of our F124 driver career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the Belgian Grand Prix, the final race before the summer break. And I don't even believe we can try and put any more upgrades on the car as we head into this one. Taking a look uh, at our driver performance, you can see everything is slowly starting to flatline uh, ever so slightly there. But we are generally still... Uh, moving in the right direction uh, within the team. Of course, you guys have kind of been asking me um, and sort of telling me where you want us to go uh, for Season 2 of this series. And to be honest, it's 99.9% .9 likely uh, that we are going to stay with the Haas Formula 1 team. We want to try and build them up uh, to a championship contender and ideally win that crown uh, before we decide to head anywhere else uh, inside this series as well. You can see we've got two upgrades currently in the works as well. Uh, and in looks of the Drivers' Championship, well, yeah, Verstappen, it's, it's a matter of when rather than if he wraps up the title. The battle behind him, though, is still looking absolutely insane um, at this stage of the series. We're 10th overall in the Drivers, 6th in the Constructors at the moment, looking pretty safe in both of those positions, although Kick Sauber uh, are still looking like they could be a threat in towards the second half of the year. Uh, specialist goals. What have we got this weekend? Uh, we want to try and achieve 15th or better in qualifying. Uh, I love Belgium, so hopefully that's not going to be too difficult. Uh, 10 laps over the course of the race weekend. Uh, we'll do 50, 50 seconds in 5th gear during a race weekend. That's quite easy. Uh, and we'll do perfect a race strategy program as well then and we've actually got another secret meeting before we head to belgium of course we saw that all new cutscene uh in yesterday's video so i'm gonna i'm very very interested to see who's gonna come knocking Well, there we go then. It is going to be Visa Cash App Racing Bulls that are interested in us at the moment. Um, they Their best result was 11th and 10th at Monaco. They got one point so far this year. Uh, and obviously, they're the B team to Red Bulls. So, I think immediately, we, we, we're going to tell them no. Hey, me again. Been chatting with some of the team higher-ups. And they're delighted with the loyalty you're showing to the team and the project. Now's a good time to ask for a bonus, or a boat, or whatever it is you people get up to out of the car. Okay, interesting then. So we, she's saying that we actually might want to try and have a look at reviewing our contracts, uh, which which I can't do yet. Um, you can see we are now 52% recognition within the team, so we are now the number one driver here. Um, so I guess when we can review our contracts, we're probably going to have to. Uh, but you can see we, we can't really do that until the end of the year, which is a bit of a shame. It would be nice to try and sign on earlier. Fully immersed in the beautiful Ardennes Forest in Belgium, surely one of the most iconic tracks of them all, is practice time here at Spa-Francorchamps. Here we are then doing our first laps actually in the dry of the all-new Spa-Francorchamps circuit inside F124. Uh, I'll try not to give you guys the speech I do every year. Um, obviously... You know already, we love this place. It's the best track on the Formula 1 calendar. It's a shame it can't seem to deliver good races in recent years. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love coming back to Belgium. And I must admit, I actually think Coda's yet yeah, done a really, really good job um, with the new version of the track as well. It feels very, very realistic um, to kind of what I've been able to see going to this venue a couple of times in the last couple of years. Also, quickly, uh, whilst we're just chatting about random things, I just want to thank everyone for 128,000 subscribers as well. We're getting closer and closer uh, to that 130k mark. So if you are new and you are enjoying the content, please do make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, we're making decent progress there. Hope you guys are still enjoying all the effort we're putting in. Uh, trying to give you as many episodes of this series as I sensibly can. As Puon is completely flat out. Well, that might be the only time I can take Puon flat out this entire weekend. Suddenly realised that I was way down on the delta um, and that the front wing angle was far too high. So we've altered that, gone out onto our tyre wear run. We need some purple scores here because we want to try and get one more upgrade on uh, before the summer break. 
Welcome to the behemoth that they value so highly. This is Spa. It's high speed. It is really challenging. We have elevation. We have dramatic corners. And we have one driver in a few moments' time who will take pole position. Well, such a long lap then, as we know, around the Ardennes. But hopefully today we can see ourselves into Q2. Have missed out in the last couple of GPs, actually. So really hoping uh, that today we can get ourselves back into that second session. Also, because obviously we've got that new specialist goal, uh, so it would be really, really useful as well. We've opted for a very, very aggressive, uh, high-speed orientated setup though this weekend, which I'm hoping is going to work. Uh, but yeah, battery management around here as well is going to be really, really important. You can gain a lot of time uh, at the end of the lap using it as you uh, run up towards Blanchemont as well. So it's going to be very, very tricky. You know, you kind of feel like you're going to have it compromised somewhere around this lap no matter what you do and obviously because this place is so long managing out the fuel usage as well is really really important i get on the battery then as we make our way up in towards the final couple of corners of the lap basically just going to try and drain it now to pick up as much speed as we possibly can 195 miles an hour up and towards blanchemont really a nothing corner almost still ran wide though just trying to scrub off as little speed as i can break at the 100 meter board for the much, much better final chicane around here. It's now actually enjoyable. That final chicane, but out of the final corner, use all the curbing up towards the line. P12. I'm happy with that. But we are slower than Hulkenberg. Alex Albon doing a fantastic job in the Williams car. There is times are still improving as we get ready to start our last lap here in qualifying. Roll back on the throttle out of the final corner. We are in the drop zone, so we do need to deliver. How many times have I said that recently? And every single time it seems to have gone badly wrong. But surely not here at Spa. Surely this is going to be a venue where we can try to deliver there. As Alvin will dive out of the way before we make it into a rouge. Thank you very much, sir. They can see how low that Merc's running. Kicking up a little bit of dirt and fibre. Um, yeah, you can see, come on, we, all, we need you all to move. George Russell spots us. we got more traffic, though, just up in front. Got to get out of the way. Gasly and Sergeant, why are they battling? What on earth is that? How are the AI so bad with blue flags on this game? And how are we still nearly four tenths up? Oh, no. Use the battery in the wrong spot. We're just going to drain it entirely this time round. Six tenths up at the moment. Just leave it wide open through Blanchemont. Come on, two more corners to go. Just the tricky bus stop to navigate on the brakes of the hundreds. Attack the curbs on the entry. Attack the curbs on the exit a little bit less. Seven tenths up, though. That is a huge improvement here. And that's us P6 at the end of Q1. Well, there we go. Mercedes looking very, very racy here. Fastest in Q1 for them as, yeah, Alex Albon. We spoke high praise of him. Pretty much matched his time there by the end of the first session. Is in the drop zone then. Both Alpines, both V-Carbs and Nico Hulkenberg. Not sure we'll make Q3, but happy that we achieved our objective. And then drain the battery. Just go, 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 go. I've got no idea how we're stacking up against Oscar Piastri at the moment. I'd love to make Q3, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Because we've just got to try and navigate our way through the bus stop. Battery is completely depleted. We'll try and recharge the pack just a little bit there. It's through the final couple of corners. What's the time going to be at the end of Q2? 41, 42. We're P8. We've done it. Look at that then, Charles Leclerc fastest in Q2 ahead of Verstappen, both those Mercs making it through. Still slower than Alex Albon in his Williams there, but happy uh, that both kick Sauber's out in Q2. Once again, Perez barely, barely scraping by. Um, but yeah, if we make Q3, I will be shocked. Sorry, if we, if we qualify any higher than P10, sorry, I'll be shocked. Well, Alex Albon then is an absolute baller here. Running up in P6 provisionally in that Williams. That is so, so nice to see for another team inside this series. But what can we do then on our one glory run here in Q3? I've made sure to not even look at what times the AI have done. Just because I want to try and set our own lap. You know, not really got anything to aim for. Just happy that we get to do one more lap in anger. Around such an iconic Formula 1 circuit. Might even bring out the sweat mode for this one. I don't quite know there. Let's open up the DRS. Oh, I actually nicked the gravel there on the inside. So you have to use a bit more battery than I would have wanted. Almost 210 miles an hour. We can break about 80 meters. Fling it in ever so slightly wider. The apex there. I think trying to compare ourselves against that Williams in Sector 1 is a little bit harsh. 
two tenths down though. Oh yeah, this lap we're just getting a little bit scrappy. Damn it! Absolutely damn it! <laughs> oh no, I'm so sorry to the team. A little bit of front wing damage, um, but I believe the last time we stacked it in Q3 was Canada, and that race went pretty well, so hopefully that's a good sign. It's the Belgian Grand Prix, the site of the maiden victory of the Jordan team in 1998. The venue that Michael Schumacher made his debut in Formula One. There is so much history here amongst the beautiful nature. We are about to go racing through the Ardennes Forest, 4.3 miles of long straights, fast corners, and huge elevation changes. Turn one at La Source, move straight into Eau Rouge, eventually climbing into Radion. They are corner names to get the heart pumping. It's old school, and we adore it. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position. Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Albon, Hamilton, Perez, Norris, Mr. Monaco, Bottas, Oscar Piastri, Joe, Sargent, Stroll, Ocon, Hulkenberg, Gasly, Sonoda, and Daniel Ricciardo fills the last spot on the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. We welcome to the commentary box, Anthony Davidson. I'm Alex Jakes. We're both looking forward to a really intriguing race today. Paddock chat earlier in the weekend that this driver had discussions with another team this week. How does that work from a driver's point of view? Now, the, the, the good thing is for the driver that if you've potentially signed or had chats with a team that are gonna further your career, that's all well and good, but the problem it immediately creates within your own team now is that potentially the team stop giving you inside information and therefore you're not privy to that knowledge of where the car's going in terms of its future development. Well, luckily, we haven't agreed anything with another team. We are staying with Haas, most likely, uh, for season two. I think the only way we'd ever change is if we got an offer for, like, a big team or something like that. But we want to make Haas champions, and they've already delivered me my first ever F1 win. And maybe today we could try and get another one there. 22 laps here around the Ardennes. Uh, it looks like we've got no chance of rain, but it is a little bit cloudy as the afternoon develops, so we'll see if that transpires into anything. But waiting on those five red lights here on the grid. Mighty long haul, but it is lights out, and away we go there. Lando Norris struggling to put the power down, so we will slice our way between him, Sergio Perez, and even Alex Albon down in towards turn one. They're able to get the throttle down and making the impact off the start there as Albon and I are going to go side by side down the hill in towards Eau Rouge. I'm not wanting to back out of it, sir. Neither is Alex Albon. They're a side by side. We go on the way in. We're given the room on the exit there, but we have made it through then. So three places gained. That Williams is an absolute missile, though. Goodbye, Alex Albon. Uh, nothing, nothing I could really do there. Uh, for the longer term, considering we're running, I think, one of the lowest drag setups I've ever used on this series. And he still absolutely flew past me. I reckon he's on 0-0 zero, zero wing uh, around this circuit today. But, of course, we saw last weekend Red Bull are able to be beaten in this series. And Ferrari now, actually, according to the game, fifth best in terms of development R&D. So the fact they were able to get the better of them goes to show, you know, your Mercedes... Your Aston Martins, your McLarens. They might all have a pretty good shot there. Speaking of McLaren, Lando Norris has gone backwards off the start quite badly. I saw Bottas and I believe Piastri were both on a set of softs. So he's definitely got the jump by the kick Sauber. Don't know about his teammate as well though. But yeah, Lando Norris, hard tyres. Not particularly fun to try and start this afternoon on. It's got to be really, really careful. The car's heavier fuel there. You're going to get a lot more understeer than we were used to from qualifying. Um, but as always, staying in the DRS of the cars in front is critical as Russell hung on to his lead on lap one. The only problem we've got right now then early on in the race uh, is that I'm sandwiched probably between the two fastest cars in a straight line inside this game. I mean, look at that. We've got a run on Alvin at the Camel Straight. All this time around, he's actually having to save some battery and still <laughs> is able 
to hang on there. We'll go deep on the brakes around the outside, though. The Williams driver actually very cautious. So around the outside, we'll go up at the chicane of Lecom. Team loving that. And yeah, I mean, now we get a bit of a better look at the battle going on at the front. As Carlos Sainz, George Russell, both trying to trade the race lead. Okay, mate, let's try and pick our moments where we use the RS. Let's try to be consistent with it going forward, please. Okay, so 1.6 seconds worth of ERS usage a month as Alex Alban. If we stay in the DRS of the cars in front, I don't think he can get back past me here, which is fantastic news. Whoa, they're three wide for the lead for Stappen. With a power move, they're suddenly at the top of the hill, and look at that, forced to back out of it. But suddenly everyone checks up in front of us, and now we might be able to get a run on Lewis Hamilton down the hill. Thought about it. Oh, we might try and have a look around the outside of the mud. No, not enough grip out there. But Verstappen, what on earth was that? Clearly, I mean, he's, he, he could crash out of the next six Grand Prix. It is still guaranteed uh, to be leading the World Championship. So I don't think he's really too bothered about what happens. Actually going to get a run then on Lewis Hamilton as we start that six then. Open up the DRS. Oh, come on, Lewis. <laughs> he tried to squeeze me. I think he thought I was going to be going the other way there. But a pass on the grass then. For P6 of this Grand Prix, and we seem to be able to get a really, really good run up a Rouge at the moment. The AI tried to harvest their battery in completely the wrong point. Helped, of course, by Sainz and Russell, both of who desperate for their first win of the year. Well, as we approach the pit window then of this Grand Prix, we're starting to finally see a bit of a breakaway between our top runners there. Alex Albert and I both just desperately trying to stay in this group. Uh, and pretend that we belong. Is are they going yep side by side again between Russell and Sainz? I think they've gone side by side up there pretty much every single lap so far. I guess if it keeps the staff at bay, then they're going to keep doing it. So look at Fernando Alonso, the wily old fox he is. Potentially wants to get back on the podium yet again here. Stuff, mate. You hit the target well there. Nice one. It's a long way to go in this race, though, so keep your head down. Oh, almost into the back of Charlotte, turn one. You can see every time we make a little mistake, though, Hamilton... He's willing to hang me on the exit of the corner there. Charles Leclerc unable to actually get the power down as well as he would have wanted. As pretty much anyone outside the top two unable to get a run on each other. I'm not including myself in that. That was all try and go to the right-hand side this time around with Leclerc. Try to keep up this momentum. Oh, Verstappen's thinking about it. Sainz wants to go to the inside. Leclerc wants to bang wheels with me, apparently. We'll have to do a hop, skip, and a jump over the gravel. Ever so slightly there to make it through. Verstappen's now completed the move on Carlos Sainz as well. So Russell's now going to be vulnerable. And I think everyone, as we get closer and closer to the pit window, is starting just to get a little bit nervous, a little bit frantic in their moves. Oh, no. Three wide. Three wide for the lead again. How's this going to work? Ain't Sainz backs out that time round. Okay, Maybe I'm thinking better of it. They're holding us up now, so let's please try and get past as soon as possible and get on with our race. Push, push. There we go, Verstappen. He's been patient. He's bided his time. He has made the move to the lead of the Grand Prix. We've got five cars from five different teams making up our top five here. But if you had to put your money on one of us, I, I think it would probably be on the Red Bull. Well, as a wise man once said, then... <laughs> Alonso broke earlier than I was expecting. Yeah, really good job on hitting that target, mate. Nice work. Still a long way to go, though. This, this is not ideal. Fernando, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what is that? That's going to be the dumbest thing I've ever seen. We did get our objective, though, which I guess is nice. I hope we didn't pick up any damage in all of that. Somehow we didn't. Um, yeah, we, we might have got stuck there with Fernando Alonso ready for the second half of this GP. Okay, mate, that's it. Go, go, go. Perfect job from you and the crew there, mate. We're delighted with that. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Let's go. Well, we have managed to jump him in the pit lane anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm slightly worried. That little incident there. I think calling it a little incident is probably a little bit of an understatement as well. Might mean now we lose the range to the top three. I don't know. We're going to have to push on. As immediately, we've actually got him out of the range as well. That is fantastic. Well, unless you name Sergio Perez, you're basically diving into the pit lane now then in this Grand Prix, I believe. And one of the McLarens opts to stay out as Nico Hulkenberg into the pits. Thanks, Mark. I've just said that. Uh, but where are we going to come out relative to those other front runners then? And see Verstappen making his way out of the pit lane. He's still out in front there, but we've actually got in that group somehow in this race. And I mean, if we can keep the power down, we've got a little bit of extra speed over Verstappen as well. 
Are we going to potentially be able to get close enough to go for a run here? We'll use plenty more battery. Car behind, running hard tyres. Look at the speed difference there, 230 miles an hour. And we are going to fly past Max Verstappen and up into the net lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. Sergio Perez, Lando Norris both into the pit lane then at the end of lap 12. So they've both done pretty well actually with extending that first stint. Norris though, yeah, it's staggered. He was the only driver that started on the hearts. Fastest lap of the race so far. Gap to your teammate behind, 0.6 seconds. Well, that's definitely not right. Uh, new fast lap of the day, though. Uh, as, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to keep the Verstappen at bay for very long. Him, Sainz, Russell. There is a bit of a gap back to Alex Albon. If we could slot back in that little gap there and maybe sort of recharge the pack for a couple laps, I'd be quite happy as here comes the Dutchman. Is he going to be able to get the run on me? Yes, he is. Not as well as I was expecting, though. Verstappen to the inside. Oh, it really makes it very clear he's having the lead back. Tell you what, Verstappen, he has not been able to break free here. We have really got some pace in the car this weekend. As Verstappen will slam the door shut to a move on the inside. Can we have a look the long way around there? Oh, the Dutchman tries to keep it in. Will pinch me over the second curb there and Verstappen will hang on to the lead. This could actually be another fight for the win with the Dutchman. It's another track a bit like Canada that is very, very high speed, but slow corners. And that is suiting this Haas package name to a T. Oh, maybe Carlos Sainz now getting a little bit more nervous about it. It's all Verstappen. Yeah, you can't put me on the grass, buddy. This time around, we'll sail past him and try to force him back over to the racing line. Again, though, Max, he's able to keep the car there way more than any other driver is able to. Get a bit of a wobble on the exit, but finally back up into the lead of the Grand Prix. Could we potentially be looking at our second win of the year? Oh no, Verstappen's going to get a run on me, and I'm worried Carlos Sainz is going to do the same as Hamilton and Albon now back in the range. There goes the Dutchman, here goes Carlos. Huge speed by Carlos Sainz. I thought he was going to try and look for a move on Verstappen as well there. The two former Toro Rosso teammates going to be battling it out for the lead of the race once again. I really don't mind sitting in P3 for a couple of laps and watching the show unfold. I do mind making a mistake through the gravel trap, though, and letting George Russell by. Come on, George, get back on that line. We cannot afford to drop out the range. Well, I think if we time it really well here, we can get a really nice run on George Russell up the Kemmel Street. So as we get into the dip of Eau Rouge and make the climb up Radion. We're going to get back on that battery pack there. Down the inside of Russell. Look at the speed. Down the inside of Verstappen and Carlos Sainz. A triple overtake to move back to the lead of the Grand Prix there. And this has, I mean, it's a combination of a car with a lot of power. And a combination of the fact the AI are really stupid in where they save up their battery there. But three cars overtaken in one go. It's a shame I've now got m not much charge. How, how on earth has Verstappen got the run on me here? What on earth is that? I've never seen anyone make a move up there, you know, sort of against me inside this game. As Arno Sainz as well is looking. Verstappen's going to box me out. And Carlos Sainz down the inside as well. Ooh, uh. Oh, no. Just got a little bit pinched there behind the Spaniards. So I'll try and get back on the battery. And even George Russell's going to potentially get back through then. Absolute nightmare after making all three overtakes. Oh, George, what are you doing? Why turn in on me? And now we've gone and lost the range to the top two. Why is that? <laughs> oh, please don't say that's game over for us. There's one little moment where we got boxing by the sap and might be doing him absolute wonders here. Because here comes Carlos Sainz again then to the inside of the Dutchman. Surely he's going to be able to complete that move as Russell's going to be hounding me down. Not able to get close enough though. But will we get back to the top two? Oh, Verstappen again, weaving this way and that. Back to the lead of the Grand Prix once more. As here comes George Russell. He might be our key. Well, funnily enough, Mark, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. As yet, Verstappen back through. Russell past me. At the very least, surely we still get a podium here. But look at that, Russell. He's actually closed back in on the Ferrari as well. Maybe letting the Merc by has been absolutely critical because he seems to have a bit more tyre life. I experienced some understeer now that you're in the wake of the car ahead. Try to get past as soon as possible. 
Sights again. I'm going to look around the outside, though. This time around at the bus stop chicane, so I've got no idea which one of those two is going to have the DRS. But one more lap to go, then. Final lap of the race. Final lap. How was George Russell now? Set fastest lap of the day there. It's back down in towards Sir 1. Our fronts have gone. We are really, really struggling now to match the AI here. But will it be Verstappen? Will it be Sainz? Could it even be George Russell? Who seems to have kicked on very aggressively towards the end of the day. We're going to try and use the battery. But I'm not sure we've got enough charge. As here we go then trying to close in. Sainz goes one way of Verstappen. Will Russell be able to go the other? Yes, he can. Can we get close enough though? No, we cannot there. As Verstappen will try and fight it against George Russell. On the exit of the corner there, we might now be able to get a run down the hill as Russell will go defensive on me. Oh, he just about spots me at the last moment there as we'll try and go the long way around. No grip out there though as Hamilton maybe senses an opportunity as well. What a ridiculous race it has been here in the Ardennes. And I said in the intro about how this track has struggled to deliver good races in recent years. Well, this one has absolutely gone and put Belgium back on the map. It is not over though as Verstappen will continue to try and hound Carlos Sainz towards the end of the race. We're going to continue trying to charge back up our battery pack for one potential final run out of Stavolo here as we'll try and get back on the battery as early as we can there. Dip the wheel in the gravel. That might be game over. Russell desperately trying to recharge up his battery as well so he might be vulnerable up towards the line as here comes Verstappen. Will he be able to try and make a move on Carlos once again? Then he's going to try and look for it. Carlos Sainz goes defensive. Verstappen to the outside. It could be a drag race to the line. As we sense the opportunity around the outside of Russell will go. We get a little bit of a wobble on the exit of the corner. We're going to be side by side. Sainz wins it. And we come through for P4. What a great race then. And a magnificent victory here at the Belgian Grand Prix. To overcome the difficult circumstances they face throughout this race today, it's not easy and it really shows a lot of maturity and you can use this, you can draw on this as a driver moving forward and boost your confidence through the rest of the championship. Ferrari are at it again, an excellent performance at today's Grand Prix and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. There we go then. Carlos Sainz makes it back-to-back -back victories for Ferrari with six cars covered by just a second and a half at the checkered flag there. This weekend, Williams and ourselves really able to get in and amongst it, but gutted after all of that. We can't even get a podium there. Verstappen will come through for P2, so I'm sure he's not too disappointed with Russell pipping me at the line there. Hamilton ahead of Albon. Charles Leclerc struggled a bit against Perez. Uh, and then Joe Guanyu and Bottas will be our final point scorers there. I think Alonso actually did end up picking up damage in that pit lane kerfuffle. Um, and yeah, Lando Norris unable to make that strategy work as well. There is, yeah, I think pretty much everyone for the battle. Oh, no, there was a four-car train. Uh, at the back of the field there. Verstappen, though, his gap at the top cut down to just 160 points as we head into the summer break there. But Carlos Sainz and Ferrari making it very, very clear. They are here to fight, at the very least, uh, Ian, at the Constructors' Championship there. And now we're even further clear of Zhou Guan Yu in P11. Constructors-wise, it is only a 126-point margin for Red Bull, so not as much as we were expecting it to be come the summer break there. Could Ferrari potentially put up a challenge in the second half of the season there as we once again just put Kick Sauber a little bit further behind us once more as well as yeah I mean Williams if they could get some big results like that towards the end of the year maybe just maybe they could try and challenge Kick Sauber as well there but thank you all so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed of course Formula One's going on its summer break now um so we'll be back tomorrow uh, with the Dutch Grand Prix